inflation and deflation crazy igcse welcome back to crazy igcse for those of you who are new to my channel hi this is crazy igcse where you can study seven igcse subjects at one place the subjects include business economics accounts biology physics maths esl solve past papers paper structures and tips so here is igcse at your fingertips please do subscribe and like Inflation is the rise in the prices of goods and services over a period of time. It is measured using CPI, which is Consumer Price Index, or RPI, Retail Price Index. But for IGCSE, we mainly use the term CPI, which is Consumer Price Index. Now, the Consumer Price Index is calculated by selection, selecting goods and services normally, which is purchased by a typical family or a household which would be identified, then the prices of the baskets of goods and services would be monitored at a number of different retail outlets across the country. Then the average price of the basket in the first year, which means also the base year, is going to be given a value of 100. Then the average change in price of these goods and services over the year will be calculated. Now, if it's rising by an average 25 percentage, the new index is 125 percentage into 100, which is 125 percentage. If the next year there's a further average increase of 10 percent, the price index will be 110 percent, and that will be 110 percent of 125. Then the average inflation rate over the two years is thus 137.5 minus 100, which is 37.5. Now, whatever I explained over here, this whole section of calculating the consumer price index or the calculations over here, mainly the calculation over here is not required to be studied. It is just a general understanding of how a consumer price index is calculated because sometimes you may get a question if in the MCQ paper, paper one, if this is the way of calculating the consumer price index about basket of goods and services so you just need to know like how it's done you don't have to learn it or by heart it or you don't have to do the calculation in igcse economics or anything now the causes and types of inflation so there are two types demand pull inflation and cost push inflation so demand pull inflation is caused by an increase in aggregate demand which is called demand pull inflation this is defined as the increase in price due to the aggregate demand increasing, ex exceeding the aggregate supply. The demand could rise due to high incomes, low taxes, and lots of other reasons. Now, a demand curve will shift to right at this stage, which will cause an extension in supply and a rise in price. Now, cost push inflation. Cost push inflation is caused by an increase in cost of production in the economy. The cost of production could rise due to high wage rate, higher indirect taxes, high cost of raw materials, high interest on capital. The su supply curve will shift to the left, causing a contraction in demand and a rise in price. A lot of economists agree that a rise in money supply in contrast with output is the key reason for inflation. If the GDP isn't accelerating as much as the money supply, then there will be high demand which could exceed supply which can lead to inflation. Now the main thing over here is to remember what each type of inflation uh, is caused by. You have demand pull inflation. In that the key word is demand, which means an increase in demand will increase demand pull inflation. Cost push inflation, the key word is cost, which means if the cost of production increases of the business, then there'll be increased costs, increased prices charged to make a profit and that will also increase or cause cost push inflation consequences of inflation lower purchasing power so when the price level rises there will less there will be less number of goods and services you could buy with the same amount of money you have this will cause a fall in the purchasing power now when the purchasing power falls the consumers will have to make choices on spending then the exports are less internationally competitive 
So if the price of exports are high, its competitiveness in the international markets will fall down as low priced foreign goods will rival it. And this will lead to a current account deficit if exports lower, especially if they are price elastic. Then inflation can cause infl uh, inflation causing inflation. So this means during inflation, the cost of living in the economy rises as you have to pay more for goods and services. And this might cause workers to demand higher wages, which will increase the cost of production. And if the price of raw materials increases, then the cost of production will rise again, causing a cost push inflation. Fixed economic income groups, lenders and savers lose. A person who has a fixed income will lose as he or she cannot press for higher wages during an infl inflation, which means even the trade union power, their bargaining power will fall. So lenders who lend money before inflation and receive the money back during inflation will lose that value of money and the same amount of money will be worth less now. So that will be a loss for them. And the savers will also lose because the interest they are earning on the savings will decrease and the savers, savers will lose the value of their money. Then the policies to control inflation. Contractionary monetary policy can reduce demand. So contractionary monetary policy will increase the tax rates. And if the tax rates or interest rates and the money supply is decreased and there is less government spending, then there will be less um, demand in the uh, country for goods and services that will reduce the purchasing power that will reduce the consumption of goods and services and reduce the prices of goods and services the same I explained here contractionary fiscal policy that is of a cut in tax rates and a cut in government spending supply side policies so privatization or deregulation will help make firms more competitive and efficient then exchange rate policy if the appreciating the domestic currency will lower the import prices that will reduce the cost push inflation arising from importing expensive raw materials that will make use of uh, export making exports more expensive which will reduce a current account deficit then deflation is a fall in prices of goods and services over a period of time the causes include aggregate supply exceeding aggregate demand. So when supply exceeds demand, there will be excess output in the country, which the economy will not be, which will not be consumed, which will cause the prices to fall. Demand has fallen in the economy. During a recession, a fall in demand will cause the prices to fall and cause the deflation. Labor productivity has risen. A high output will lead to low average cost, which means economies of scale. And that uh, economics of scale will happen if a country is a large, uh, it's, it's a large business which will have low average cost. That's also another reason. But if labor productivity has risen, then there will be more efficiency and high output, which will lower the average cost, and that will also lower the lower the price of the product sold. Technological advance has reduced the cost of production. So an increase in technology or in better um, advancement in technology like better machineries will reduce the um, costs because there will be increased efficiency and high output. Consequences of deflation, low prices will discourage production resulting in unemployment. As demand and prices fall, investors will be discouraged to invest, which will lower the GDP of the country and reduce the economic growth. Deflation can cause recession as demand and prices continue to fall, and the firms will be forced to close down as enough profits are not made. Tax revenue of the government will fall, so there will be less government spending, less um, unemployment benefits less education, investment in education and healthcare, and there will be more inequality, income inequality. Then the borrowers will lose the uh, lose during a deflation because now the value of the debt they owe is higher than what they had borrowed initially. Then the deflation will increase the real debt burden of the government as the value of the debt money will increase. So government debt will increase. Policies to control deflation, expansionary monetary policy. This is, this is just the opposite of uh, inflation. Here, it will you uh, the government will try to increase the money supply and 
reduce the interest rates. Then expansionary fiscal policy. It, uh, the government will reduce taxes and increase government spending. Devaluation. So devaluing the currency through selling domestic currency and increasing the money supply will cause the export prices to fall, which will increase demand for exports from other countries and uh, encourage the production of exports, which will result in high demand. It will increase the prices of import products and it will rise the costs and prices of products in the economy. Changing inflation expectations. So when deflation is expected, businesses won't increase wages and consumers won't pay high prices. This will cause deflation the expected but if the monetary authorities indicate that they expect high inflation firms will pay their workers more and consumers will spend more now which means their purchasing power has increased and the expenditure on goods and services will increase that will cause a reduction in deflation now this is the end of our topic i hope you understood this topic and found this useful if you did please do subscribe and like and thank you for watching crazy